as if everyone is stuck in some class or station in life. Victims of circumstances beyond our control, with the government there to help us cope with our fate. It's the exact opposite of everything I learned growing up in Wisconsin or at college in Ohio. Now, when I was waiting tables, washing dishes, or mowing lawns for money, I never thought of myself as stuck in some station in life. I was on my own path, my own journey, an American journey, where I could think for myself, decide for myself, define happiness for myself. That's what we do in this country. That's the American dream. That's freedom. And I'll take it any day over the supervision and sanctimony of the central planners. Yes, yeah. I mean, I wish this guy was running instead of Romney. They should, they should switch spots. By themselves, no, by themselves, good. the failures of one administration are not a mandate for a new administration. A challenger must stand on his own merits. He must be ready and worthy to serve in the office of president. We're a full generation apart. Governor Romney and I, and in some ways we're different. There are the songs in his iPod, which I've heard on the campaign bus, <laughs> and I've heard it on many hotel elevators. <laughs> <laughs> he, actually, he actually urged me to play some of these songs at campaign rallies. I said, look, I hope it's not a deal breaker, Mitt. <laughs> But my playlist, it starts with ACDC and it ends with Zeppelin. <laughs> a generation apart, a generation apart, but that doesn't matter. It makes us different, but not in any of the things that matter. Mitt and Romney and I both grew up in the heartland. And we know what places like Wisconsin and Michigan look like when times are good. We know what these communities look like when times are good. When people are working. When families are doing more than just getting by. And we know it can be that way again. We've had very different careers. Mine mainly in public service. His mostly in the private sector. He helped start businesses and turn around failing ones. And by the way, being successful in business, that's a good thing. Yeah, we're trying to bash Ronald because he's good in business. Yeah. What the? So backwards. Nick, Nick has not only succeeded, but he succeeded where others could not. He turned around the Olympics at a time when a great institution was collapsing under the weight of bad management, overspending, and corruption. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> he was the Republican governor of a state where almost nine in ten legislators are Democrats. And yet, he balanced the budget without raising taxes. Unemployment went down. Household incomes went up. And Massachusetts under Governor Mitt Romney saw its credit rating upgraded. He's smart to pick this dude. Oh, yeah. Mitt and I also go to different churches. But in any church, the best kind of preaching is done by example. And I've been watching that example. The man who will accept your nomination tomorrow is prayerful and faithful and honorable. Not only a defender of marriage, he, he offers an example of marriage at its best. Not only a fine businessman, he's a fine man. Worthy of leading this optimistic and good-hearted country. Our faiths come together in the same moral creed. We believe that in every life, there is goodness. For every person, there is hope. Each one of us 
was made for a reason, bearing the image and likeness of the Lord of Life. responsibilities one to another we do not each face the world alone and the greatest of all responsibilities is that of the strong to protect the weak the truest measure of any society is how it treats those who cannot defend or care for themselves each of these moral ideas each of these moral ideas is essential to democratic government, to the rule of law, to life in a humane and decent society. They are the moral creed of our country, as powerful in our time as on the day of America's founding. They are self-evident and unchanging, and sometimes even presidents need reminding that our rights come from nature and God and not from government. since the best among us have defended our freedoms they are protecting us right now we honor them and all of our veterans and we thank them the right that makes all the difference now is the right to choose our own leaders and you are entitled to the clearest possible choice, because the time for choosing is drawing near. So here is our pledge. We will not duck the tough issues, we will lead. We will not spend the next four years blaming others, we will take responsibility. We will not try to replace our founding principles, we will reapply our founding principles. Absolutely, George, and tonight Paul Ryan gave us a litany of things that they 